and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at the C64. Uh, this is a full size version of the C64, uh, made by the same guys who gave us this, the C64 Mini. Um, the problem with the Mini was of course it didn't have a functioning keyboard. Um, so we now have this with a fully functioning full size keyboard. Um, this is a replica of the Breadbin C64. The C64 I have, in fact I have two of them, is uh, C64C. Um, I have one permanently set up in the game room, uh, so I'm a big fan of Commodore 64, very big fan. I'm primarily interested in this uh, for game preservation, the idea that we can recreate things. Mini consoles are great, but if we can recreate things in full size like this, I mean that's amazing. Um, a big feature is of course you can put your own games on it you know, using a USB stick. So let's have a look at what's in the box, uh, then we'll set it up and have a look uh, how it runs. Let's get to it. Okay. I mean, I, I, it is impressive already, just with the, uh, the box. It just looks so good. Uh, so yeah, the, I mean the, the joystick as well. We'll compare it to the mini joystick, but I, I am aware that this has micro switches, which the previous one on the, with the mini didn't. Um, it's supposed to be like the Competition Pro joystick. Um, so let's have a look. 64 games again. There are a few additional games this time as well. So you've got Attack of the Mutant Camels, uh, Grid Runner, a couple of others as text-based games as well, which is really handy because, of course, we've got the keyboard. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the box. Okay, so let's have a look. I'll try and do this side on. Uh, so here we have the C64. Um, I'll just take that out. I love the fact we get this little cover because that actually gives me. Uh, a cover for when I get a new bread bin, as I say, I've, I've only got the C64Cs, um, but the one that I do have does have a custom made plastic cover for it. Um, oh, oh, okay, there's some weight to that. I have seen, if you look at other uh, unboxings, some guys are taking these apart, uh, you will discover that there is a very small board uh, here, and this is all empty. Um, so it's just like a C64 Mini, but I mean, I'm not particularly surprised at that, it's not going to take a lot. Obviously this is emulation, so there's a little board here, and the rest of this is empty, there's there must be some weights in there of some sort, because that's that's a good weight to it. And we'll just have a little... Nice, nice feeling keyboard. I'm just going to hold that up to the camera, so you can see. Uh, as you see on the side, you've got your USB joystick ports there, uh, three of. Um, I take it one of those is for your USB stick as well, but we'll find out. Um, on off button, uh, you've also got your power uh, there, USB-C powered. Um, I believe this comes with a power supply, we'll have a look. HDMI, HDMI connection in here. Uh, and there's another USB port in the back, which I haven't got the foggiest idea what that's for, so we'll have a look at the manual. Um, nicely packaged, just want to point out, yeah, it does come very well protected, very important. And just bring out the box here, shuffle this out of the way. So I'm going to assume this little box here is the power supply, yes it is. Power supply and USB-C and um, HDMI cable in there. Um, that's quite handy, I like the options. I have the the minis obviously and the Retron 77 here is running through USB on the telly. So I quite like hooking it up that way. Uh, we'll set that to the side for now. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the joystick. Also the manual in here. There you are, it's a fearful, um, fearful nod to the original manual which was yay thick. Um, yeah, just tells you how to set it up, USB port, um, and there's not much to this because you quickly get to the um, French instructions, uh, three pages in, four pages in, so that's good. Uh, we'll have a look at the joystick, okay, yeah, this is what we wanted, clicky stick, obviously uh, yeah, it's to replicate the Competition Pro, um, I wasn't a big fan of the um, Commodore 64 Mini one, although that was to represent uh, to copy the Pro as well, but it needed micro switch, you know, it really did, and that's that's nice. I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to trying that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just show you the mini and the uh, full size C64 next to each other. Brilliant. I mean, the the mini was fantastic. Um, it was great for C64 fans, 
with a lack of working keyboard uh, it just made it impossible um, to play games that we, we would like um, especially text based um, stuff so yeah uh, it looks like it's probably almost the same size board that's in here going on what I've seen already um, but really the, the thing for me this is the controller from the mini you know it, it's it's kind of lifeless because it's, it's not a micro switch it's not clicky um, and this yeah sounds fantastic I'm very much looking forward to plugging this in okay so the next thing is to do the firmware update um, that's quite straightforward by the looks of it uh, just a case of um, installing it on your USB stick uh, and the next thing we'll look at is uh, the interface and how it plays okay so I'm actually going to show you what happens when we actually uh, start up the C64 for the first time it's just the button on the side nice start up screen uh, ok, language select, it's um, stick to do that I noticed return doesn't work there um, so there's a little button marked um, to, to go through this um, so yes I am outside North America oh, ok it's not that. Um, yeah, so now it's returned. Okay, so we've got the carousel mode, uh, which is like the, the C64 Mini, uh, and the classic mode. I'm not going to look at the classic mode just yet, as you see, standard um, Commodore basic screen. Uh, I'm not going to touch that at the moment. Um, we're just going to have a look at the carousel. Oh, there we go. Okay, so as you see, it's detected my USB stick. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show you how we actually um, upgrade the firmware on this. Uh, it's quite straightforward. So I've got my USB stick, you can get the firmware from the uh, website. Uh, quite straightforward. Uh, we'll go to system information, and then it detects it firmware update found C64 1.3. Then um, apply. Nice and easy. I need to say, you know, that's how you get access to your additional games, um, which is really the big selling point for this. As much as the some of the games that are included on it are pretty good, adding your own games is, is what it's all about, of course. Um, so yeah, we don't need to go through the games. There's most of the same as the many. There's a few extras: uh, Attack of the Mutant Camels. Um, uh, what was there? There's a couple there. There's a text-based one, and I completely forgot the name of it looking good. Uh, so I'll just to go through some of the menu uh, screens here so you can get your usual um, settings. So you've got your CRT pixel perfect, you've got your North American and European uh, screens. I'm going to go for European 4x3. I do not want the CRT effect because I think it's overkill. Um, I don't remember my CRT being that bad. I have one over there. It doesn't look anything as bad as that even with a C64 plugged into it. Um, so yeah Oh, I've picked the wrong one. There we go. Go back. Uh, right, okay, so possible mission two. No, no, no. Just having a look through. Pit stop. This should be nice and embarrassing. Uh, right, we'll just go for Brands Hatch. Just go with the basic settings here. Ah, finally, opportunity to use the keyboard. Uh, just press return. Okay, I'm going to use my name. Uh. 
Yeah, it's nice. The controller's nice and responsive as well, which is all we wanted. Uh, right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna exit out. So you just you hit the little side button there, um, the first to the right. That's your kind of um, your main button for getting in and out of things. Uh, let's see. Oh no no no! Skate crazy. Okay. I should apologise for the uh, tacky addition of Christmas lights, by the way, I was trying to, we had leftover lights, I was trying to make my uh, game room a little bit more Christmassy. I've even got a spare mini tree up behind me. I like Christmas. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Is that, I mean, the control is nice compared to the last one. But it's just a shame on the mini. Oh, shame on the mini that it didn't have... It wasn't micro switch like that, it was no sound. Oh, I keep messing that up. Come on, we're on a timer yet. Uh, I'll go around it. Nice and responsive. Not feeling any issues with lag, to be honest. Not that I can see so far. Yeah. Oh no, idiot. <laughs> hey. There we go. Not bad for a game I haven't played in, I don't remember when. Uh, okay, let's have a little look at Boulder Dash. It's a good common game to get a, a look at the screen. And... Yeah, it's, it's, uh, this is a nice joystick, I'm actually really impressed with this. Uh oh. So here we've got a text-based game. This, of course, is uh, going to be really handy with this. Having the working keyboard, the um, Commodore Mini, no working keyboard, absolute nightmare. Uh, so it's the usual controls. I can also see a sharp piece of flint. Uh, so we're going to take flint. Okay. Uh, tell what to do. East. See a drawing on the wall. I wonder. A long time since I, yeah, it shows a man climbing down a pit using a rope, tell me what to do. Okay, can we take the drawing? I can't, I await your command. South, I can't go, let's go back, west, uh, down. Yeah, but we're not going to do any more of this, it just shows you, we've got text based games we can access fully now. Um, especially you know if you can add your own ROMs then that's fantastic yeah, so let's see see if there's anything else we've missed off so you've got your settings um, you've got your music so it tells you which button in the corner there so music on and off there you go uh, USB stick um, straightforward to access your games you literally just down your USB sticks there um, settings just tells you model it also obviously I've upgraded the firmware switch to classic mode uh, obviously you've got your, your traditional screen here uh, you shift and stop press play on tape love it um, so if you hit the media access um, here you'll see your disk drive uh, which is the that's just the firmware but then you've got cartridge slot cassette deck and then you can add your games from here um, and it'll tell you at the bottom. Um, so the second button along and you load 
your own from classic mode should you wish you can do it just the same from carousel um, mode as well just while we're in Commodore 64 basic here um, that classic screen just want to show you that we can swap to VIC-20 um, so if we go to options um, device settings computer model and then you change it I'm running NTSC here simply because this tele supports it uh, but so if I go to VIC-20 NTSC is the current model and just go back there we are so it runs in VIC-20 mode fantastic Okay, so overall, I think this is an absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Um, £110 paid, well worth it, absolutely. Um, great bit of nostalgia. It also shows me I, I'm really interested in game preservation. Uh, and by that, I mean the tapes that we used in the UK mainly here. The um, problem is they don't stand the test of time. This now means that I can preserve them and use this bit of hardware. The Commodore 64 original, well, it's the Commodore 64 C that I have set up permanently in the game room, it uses a digital drive, so I can still use original hardware um, with ROMs. And um, I have the same with the Acorn Electron here. This has a, an SD card reader in the back, as does my Sinclair Spectrum next to it. Um, I'm about to get the GoTek drive installed on my Amiga 500. Um, for me, that's the way to go. I want original hardware. Um, in the game room, but I'm also very interested. I mean, your classic minis are fantastic, but this shows me that it's possible to get a classic bit of hardware remade. It may very well be emulation, but that's you know that's fine with me if it works well. Um, so I'm really really pleased with this. I highly recommend it. Check it out. So I hope you subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video. I'll see you next time. <laughs>